Today on Knife Banter, we are at SHOT Show, and it is the first ever on-site Knife Banter. Why did you guys make an 87? Valley songs are kind of the root of the company. We just wanted to do something very different than that had ever been done before. What is up, guys? Today on Knife Banter, we are at SHOT Show 2016. It is the first ever on-site Knife Banter with Derek from Benchmade and Hans from Benchmade. Derek, what do you do at Benchmade? Uh, I do PR and communications. And Hans? I'm in product management for Blue Class, uh, the Hunt Series, and Gold. Cool, 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 cool. Very cool, very cool. So, why are we gathered here today? We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. So right here we have the new uh, Benchmade 87, 5.5 inch handles, titanium uh, channel, which is what everybody's been wanting. Uh, this thing flips great, man. If I were to compare it to a knife that we've currently been flipping, uh, I would say it'd be like the replicant, uh, but maybe just slightly more blade heavy um, because you know it does tend to roll out a little bit on uh, rollovers and such. But uh, you know it's definitely controllable. You know it's not like not like it's going to fly out of your hand at a moment's notice. So it really compares a lot to the uh, the replicant. Uh, I couldn't really compare it much to anything else other than uh, the width of it is more along the uh, the bar fly size. So it's a little wider here. I think it's going to accommodate much like uh, larger, thicker hands than say like my skeleton fingers here. So. I think it's going to be great for a whole different market of uh, valley flippers and it's going to be able to get them into a high-end valley a lot better than what's on the market now. Now back to our show. What are we looking at? <laughs> Talking well, about the 87. The 87. The brand new Benchmade 87 Valley song. Why did you guys make an 87? What's the deal? Honestly, this is perfectly timed for the Benchmade 30th anniversary. Um, Valley songs are kind of the root of the company. Les Diasis, when he founded it, he had a, an idea to create high quality Valley song knives. So <clears throat> it's been interesting to watch. It's a family owned company. And actually about six years ago, his son, John, became very active in the organization. And you can see a ton of stuff resulting from that in terms of innovations and how he's challenged our operations and design and supply chain. Um, everything from going 100% made in USA focus to titanium single piece billet construction to customizing okay. Benchmade. So, so walk me through it. Why? What makes this '87 kind of a, a Benchmade special special project, special run? Show me. Show me the money. Show it. Yeah. Well, okay. oh, Eric, it. you want to walk him through the billets? I mean, that's sure. that's part of what makes the story really cool with these. So, a big well. part of it is, of course. Um, it's a billet titanium valve song. So comparing it, well, I won't even compare it. Let's just start off with what a billet is. So this is a billet. This is essentially what each handle of the 87 will start out as. A solid chunk of titanium. Sh relatively shapeless. I mean, it gives you kind of a general idea. Heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. And there's a lot of material that we will mill off and, you know, eventually, you know, uh, wear away to create what you see in the final product. So. This kind of large chunk of titanium, which, by the way, billet uh, formed definitely different from uh, uh, our previous valley songs that were made of titanium. So our previous valley songs made of titanium, such as the 42. Where, did, where did you steal this 42 from? Oh, I stole it from our archive, <laughs> and uh, I'm on the hook for it. We're going to so. sell it on eBay after this, guys. Don't start that <laughs> rumor. Just teasing, Don't just start teasing. that rumor. Just teasing. Oh, uh, not <laughs> worth losing my job. Over. But... That being an example is a cast titanium handled knife. So cast titanium is exactly what it sounds like. They'll basically take molten titanium, pour it into a mold, and form these handles. Because of that process, um, I like to use the kind of like the jello. Anybody who's ever made jello, you take a liquid jello and you pour it into a mold, you get these little bubbles in it. In steel, or in terms of uh, casting metals, uh, it's called porosity. So you'll get basically these sponge-like voids that occur in that material as the material cools and hardens. Um, so with that, when you start finishing the handle, you get these little sponge holes that will pop up every now and then when you're finishing your handle. Billet, you don't necessarily have that issue. Um, nice. It's basically hammered and smushed to the point where all those little pores are eliminated. 
Nice. So it is a solid chunk of titanium. So there's step one. What's step two? Step two, we start wearing away material. As you can see, we are add some chamfering, uh, wear away some of the material on top. It starts taking a little more shape. As you can see, they're still flat. Um, this is actually the original surface of what that billet started out as. So as you can see, big difference. Moving on to the next process, you start getting more chamfers, uh, a little bit of the holes, and the big part is where we start channeling out the titanium. So think of a big tool bit coming in and just digging out all this titanium that once started out as this guy. And this is sitting on a CNC machine for how long? Uh, give or take probably an hour per handle. Wow. So there's a lot of length and a lot of time that, come, that goes into making one of these handles. And of course, this isn't yet complete. Once you get to this point, it's uh, time for all the finishing stages. So you'll basically get your uh, finish, your kind of bead blast finish, in addition to a fully channeled handle. That single piece, there's no screws holding this together. It's not sandwiched like, uh, like our 60 series. It is started out as one piece and ends as one piece. The finish is another difference too between uh, billet versus cast titanium. Okay. If you were to look closely on the channels here in the 42, you can see it's really rough in there. Yeah. Um, you get a consistent overall finish in billet titanium, which is really nice. So I, I've seen a lot of people, let's let's just address it, a lot of people complain about the price. You guys are a premium brand. I think you got to understand that out of the gate. Benchmade is a premium brand. Um, but why is this a $600 MSRP? I think that a lot of the comparisons made out there are actually with previous Benchmade models like the 42. And shout out real quick to uh, Squidmaster for already putting together a very comprehensive comparison yeah. between the two. We'll link to that in the description box. It's uh, a Reddit forum, yep, right? It is, yeah. yeah. Really well done. Uh, he kind of goes over it step by step, uh, the major differences. <clears throat> you see a lot of upgrades in this versus any previous Benchmade. Um, the billet is a big part of it, and that time on the machine, the expense of the material. Sure. Um, the blade steel is a huge upgrade. What's our blade steel again? S30V is the blade steel on the 87 versus the, the actual original 42s were in a Sandvik, uh, much lower end steel. Uh, ultimately, they ended up being a 154 CM uh, in the later models. The um, action uh, on the 87 is actually through what we call thrust bearing washers. And those are washers with ball bearings, four per. Um, on each of these hinges <clears throat> nice versus just washers no ball bearings on the 40 series um, the latch mechanism spring latch there awesome uh, very popular this we tried to outdo and created a magnetized latch system so you can actually pop it open by squeezing same as the spring latch love it. but there's no additional hardware in there that could fail like a spring it's magnetized love it that's so cool Another cool upgrade. Wait, okay, let me let me just yeah. make sure. Let me make sure. So this is magnetized on this side. Both sides uh, of these hardware pieces actually have magnets. So this is bouncing via magnets. Correct. Correct. That's cool. I don't think I realized that. And then this side is magnetized as well. That side just locks in. Just locks. Yep. Okay, got it. Got it. Just locks normal. That is cool. It's pretty rad. It's and you said there's ball bearings here in the pivot. You got yeah. it. Nice. It's the most modern ballet song we've ever done. That is so cool. Why the why the premium blade steel? Well, I mean, S30V is one of Benchmade's favorite blade steels. Yeah. It's one of the most perfect combinations of edge retention and corrosion resistance. Uh, we used it as a baseline in our hunt line since the beginning due to that performance. And you're seeing more and more Benchmades going to S30V as we actually have gotten better at using it, uh, better at heat treating it, and even further increasing the performance of S30. So looking at these together, I mean... Beautiful pieces, both of them. I, I think you guys should be stoked. <laughs> like, just, it's a great line. I won't lie. I've had one in my pocket for the last couple months, and it's pretty rad. In fact, uh, Hans was at the shop the other day. He wouldn't let us film because his was too beat up, he said. <laughs> it wasn't pristine enough condition, but... They actually do cool. wear very, very well, though. Like, the this titanium finish is... Uh, it takes on a really gorgeous look, actually, after having spent some time in hand. It's a nice patina. Yeah. You know, smooths out in certain areas where you grip it a lot, and... No, it just it ages well. I love it, love it. What else is what else is unique about the eighty seven? What are people asking about? 
What have you seen? Well, it's mostly been very little information so far. Yeah. And so I thought I'd go ahead and take this opportunity to talk about something Love else it. that's really cool. Um, <clears throat> and that's the sheath. Now, yeah. historically, we've often done uh, just a, a very simple fold-over top nylon Velcro sheath. Um, works fine. You can carry it, you know, horizontally on your belt. This is actually based on a concealed carry mag pouch. Uh, okay. Local guy, just down the street from the factory, actually, I had one of his mag pouches. Um, it's a brand called Snake Eater. He does tactical belts and nice. mag pouches. And I was using it to hold my 87 Proto. And we actually approached him about maybe developing something with us uh, for Bally Song specifically. So you can actually configure this either in a vertical or horizontal carry fits all of Benchmade's Bally songs, including the 51, in a really nice tight compression sleeve. So really comfortable, really easy to carry, looks really cool. Again, most modern Benchmade Bally sna ever. It's a snazzy pouch, too. It's pretty rad. It's got good flair. <laughs> Seriously. Cool thing is, too, there, like, I get a kick out of the Bally community because they're, they're super supportive to folks that want to learn it. Yep. Is this a good one to learn with? Probably not entry so, level. Not but entry level necessary, but, but if you're serious long, about it. But you know, a big thing with the Valley guys, at least what I get, is they, they like having this long handle. It's a five and a half inch handle. It's a lot of stuff yeah. to grab onto, especially if you're learning how to do rollovers, which yeah. clearly I'm still learning. Dude, I, <laughs> that'd be another good. Uh, you're better than I am. Here. If you notice, I don't flip. I like my fingers. Call me a sissy. I'm sure you will in the yeah. comments, but so versus the 42, you got a little more area to grab onto. Um, Especially for those guys who do a lot more intricate tricks, that definitely comes in comes in handy. I mean, the way I would categorize a lot of ballets are there's the beginners, there's performance ballets, and there's collector ballets. Where does this, this thing's full on tuned for performance? Love it. Yeah, that's so cool. That is so cool. Anything else that comes to mind, guys? Knife bender, wise? Gosh, it's an awesome knife. It's got mean looking Warncliffe in the blade. Yeah, the yeah, blade why, why is the a little controversial. There? It's. Uh, we just wanted to do something very different than that it had ever been done before. This is a really modern take on a Warncliffe blade, yeah. um, <clears throat> which actually is making a bit of a resurgence just in general as sure. people look towards kind of modernized classics. Yeah. <clears throat> We've done that with a few of our other knives. They tend to be really popular. It's a great look. We can combine those high-end materials with some classic shapes. Love it. Solid performance, guys. I'm stoked about it. <clears throat> it's, it's cool. If you've got questions that we can answer, uh, we'll do our best to answer them in the comments. Feel free to leave your comments down below in the description box. If you like the video, definitely give it a like, comment, and share. Hans, Derek, you guys rock. Oh, thank, thank you, gents. You. Appreciate yeah. it. And I, I think this is our first knife banter without Austin. Oh, I was a moment sad of, about that. Moment of silence for Austin. Austin's back in the shop. <laughs> so we'll have him on the next knife banter. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks. All right. You got good audio? We're, we're good? Yeah. We're good? Just give a little, give a little talk. All right, testing one, two, three. Here with Derek and Han from Benchmade. And Derek's got his next appointment. Actually, we're probably kicking into your lunch. Okay.